Hi, I'm Norm Kern and I'd like to welcome you to Access MC, Access to Motorcycling. Each month we take you to motorcycle events both amateur and professional, both road and off-road. Even after riding for over 25 years, I'm still amazed at the sheer variety in our sport. It seems like each rider I meet is unique. Some are racers. They like dirt events like enduros, motocross, or hair scrambles. Other dirt riders would never touch an unimproved course. They want a half mile dirt track or a nice smooth short track to ride on. Some racers don't like dirt at all. They love to road race on pavement. Even road riders have a wide variety of interests. Some just like to go for a ride. Some prefer long road tours. Some ride poker runs. Some prefer sport touring on twisty roads at a brisk pace. And some like to go to rallies. That's what this show is about. We're going to a motorcycle rally at Richmond, Kentucky. Last year, our coverage of the rally featured a tour to Natural Bridge. This time, though, we'll stick around at the rally headquarters. As you'll see, there's as much variety within a rally as there is in the rest of motorcycling. When you arrive in Richmond, Kentucky, one of the first things you see is the large parking area at the sports center at uh, Eastern Kentucky University, and this is the headquarters of the rally. It rained the day that we got there, but that didn't keep a lot of people from showing up. Well, we're at the uh, Ryder Rally in Richmond, Kentucky, and this is Memorial Day weekend in 1991, and with me here is Bo Allen Pacheco, who's the Master of Ceremonies for the Ryder Rally. Would you like to tell us a little bit about this rally? Well, what we have here, Norm, is uh, we're Rider Magazine out of Lo uh, Los Angeles, California, and we're the largest touring magazine in the country. And so what we do is we have three rallies a year. Mm -hmm. We provide uh, a landscape. We provide a place for the, for the people to come and see what's in the industry. They come here and they can buy tires. They can ride every brand of motorcycle there is. We got Honda, Harley-Davidson, Kawasaki, Suzuki, BMW, Honda, uh, I think I said that, Moto Guzzi is here, <laughs> and, uh, and they come here and they all get together, and it's one great big party gathering. Not partying as, as like in drinking a lot, but, yeah. but a big, um, more like a family picnic gathering. We stay here for four days and, um, and meet mm -hmm. and uh, see each other and, uh, and have a ball. And tonight you have a big parade, right? We'll have a big parade. We'll start at 6.30, we'll uh, all line up. We'll uh, go downtown, go straight through town in a great big parade. Then we'll end up in Richmond Mall where we'll have our light parade. And that'll start at 9.30 tonight. And uh, that's a lot of fun because the entire town turns out for that. Okay, what's, what's a light parade? Well, uh, a lot of people spend a lot of money to put lights on their bikes. Okay. They spend thousands of dollars to put extra lights all over the back and the front. And it's gorgeous. Some people even have a computerized system like uh, the Disney light parade, things like mm -hmm. that. So we get to the mall, turn out the lights, and the bikes come around, and they look just beautiful. <laughs> well, now you have some sort of a judging event, too, for customs and things. Yeah. When, when we, is that one? Uh, let's see, that'll be tomorrow. They're okay. judging for the best best paint job, uh, most uh, colorful chrome, things that, like that. That's in the afternoon? That'll be in the yeah. afternoon, yeah. OK. Uh, you also have tours and things. That's Do right, we have, we have tours. Them? And uh, this is, we're in the heart of bluegrass country, which of course is the uh, thoroughbreds. Mm -hmm. And we have their Shaker Village here and the old distilleries. Mm -hmm. So um, we have the local people uh, guide tours to all these historical landmarks and the uh, prettiest part of the county. Mm -hmm. Well, that's really terrific. Thanks for telling My us pleasure. all about it. Thank you. And we'll see you around here at the rally. I hope so. Okay. Most of the riders who come to these rallies take exceptionally good care of their motorcycles. They spend hours polishing and cleaning. On the other hand, there are some people who don't take care of their motorcycles at all and actually take pride in not taking care of them. This bike, which shows up at many rallies, uh, is a collection of almost anything that the owner can find, and he hangs it on there. 
and he makes a point of never cleaning it and never fixing anything on it unless it actually breaks. Hi, I'm here with uh, Doreen and Chris Waldhart uh, from Wisconsin, and they are members of the Retreads Motorcycle Club. And most people think of motorcycle clubs as being some sort of a local organization where uh, people get together and have face-to-face -face meetings every week, but the Retreads isn't exactly like that, is it? Could you tell us a little bit about the Retreads? Well, they're for people over 40 years old, and they don't have meetings such as meetings. They have uh, uh, motorcycle uh, conventions. Or, uh, we have brunches. Brunches and conventions and such. And uh, we have get-togethers as state convention, regional and uh, international. And uh, we just like to get together and ride. Mm -hmm. Okay. How how did you get interested in motorcycling? How did I get interested? Yes. My sister bought her kid a bicycle or motorcycle for his graduation, and then they had the good sense to come riding into our yard on it, and I got jealous. And mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, I can do that. So mm -hmm. I bought a motorcycle and learned to ride it, and taught him to ride it. When I got my bike, nobody take me seriously. It was really weird. I go to the dealer and say, I want to buy a motorcycle. They say, you ride one? I said, no, but I want to learn. Well, you know, then they go to somebody else, you know, and they just kind of leave me hanging there. And uh, it was it was really, I don't think it's like that anymore. That was like no, that's, 11 years that's ago. that's changing. I understand yeah. there's even now a women's motorcycling magazine. Well, there's a women, women on wheels. There's mm -hmm. a couple of motor, women motorcycle organizations. I don't mm -hmm. belong to those. I don't believe in those. I think yeah. everybody together belongs in a motorcycle club. Yes, like, it's, it's just people. motorcycling. Right. It's not men motorcycling right. or it women motorcycling. Right, it doesn't matter if you're a guy or a girl or a kid or mm -hmm. whatever. If you're on a motorcycle, it's good fun. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much. It's been nice talking to you. Thank you. The rally is a major gathering place for artists and customizers of all types. Consequently, the people who go to rallies often take advantage of this opportunity to have custom decoration work done on their motorcycles. This lady's putting pinstripes and other painted decorations on the uh, tailpiece of a bike. A number of these artists simply follow the rallies from place to place, and that's how they make their living. But Barbara had a crash on her bicycle a couple of days before, and she was in bad shape. Some people even have elaborate murals painted on the fairings and saddlebags and trunks of their motorcycles. Some people also choose this opportunity to have new tires and other accessories put on. Here we're mounting a tire. Okay, Larry. Larry Sumner, your daughter. There's also sort of a bizarre atmosphere uh, with tables and tables full of accessories and apparel. Here's a sidecar rig that's owned by Mike Corbin, uh, who is the president of uh, Corbin Seats. I'm with Paul Gomez, Vice President of Corbin Seats, and he's going to tell us a little bit about how the company got started and how you got to where you are in the market today. Alrighty. Well, the company started back in 1968. Uh, Mike basically uh, owned a couple of Triumphs. He's been a motorcycle enthusiast all his life. Mm -hmm. Got out of the Navy, wanted to find something to do. He became an electrical contractor. Mm -hmm. At that point, uh, you know, he had a couple of Triumphs in his garage and decided that he needed a little bit more comfort. So what he did is he developed a couple of seats, just handmade, 
uh, for his own use, and in doing so, he built a seat for a buddy of his, Harley. Um, at that point, his buddy had taken the bike in to be serviced at the local Harley shop, and uh, the local Harley dealer was just flabbergasted with this uh, seat, you know, this creation. It's a new thing. Obviously, we knew back then that, you know, motorcycles did need a little bit more comfort. Yeah. So that dealer, in turn, ordered up five seats, which turned into ten seats, which turned into twenty, and, you know, the story's history from that point yeah. on. Uh, basically, he's gone on to uh, be a leading innovator in the industry, and uh, we've gone from uh, 1968 all the way up to present time. We're currently manufacturing in Castroville, California, where we've just finished an addition uh, to our building and doubling its size. Um, how many of these rallies a year do you get to? Oh, at this point, we've got about three trucks out on the road full time, oh, really? and I'd say we hit a good 40 to 60 rallies wow. a year. Yeah. Okay. We're basically known as the road dogs. <laughs> I guess. This is a pretty uh, pretty fancy setup. Yeah, yeah. We figured, uh, you know, we basically owe it to the motorcycling community to offer them everything that we have to offer to the market. And uh, in order to be able to do that correctly, we felt that this size of a rig would be able to handle that. Yeah, well, that's fantastic. Well, uh -huh. Paul, thanks a lot. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. As evening approaches, everyone lines up for the annual parade through town. This is yet another opportunity to polish and clean your motorcycle. Here we're starting out from the parking lot. and we head down to one of the side streets that goes through the Eastern Kentucky University area. As you can see, we have a large number of people who take advantage of the opportunity to ride in this parade. As we get down close to the center of the town, you'll notice that there are a lot more people at the sides of the streets. The local townspeople really like this parade and they turn out in droves. dilemma that you face if you're a motorcyclist at one of these rallies is whether you ride in the parade or watch it. out of the downtown area and back through the university area. The local police have blocked off all the intersections so there are no delays. Now we're really heading out towards Richmond Mall for the light show. Here you can see Richmond Mall in the distance.
As darkness approaches, everyone lines up around the area where the light show is going to be. And here they come. And there he goes, give him a hand, ladies and gentlemen, around the first corner, the invisible motorcycle. That's Casper the Friendly Goldie Davidson, made right. here in the USA. The next day finds us back at Rally Headquarters. We're in the, uh, we're in the Exposition Center at the uh, Rally here in Richmond, and I have with me Courtney Caldwell, who is the uh, publisher of mm -hmm. American Woman Magazine, which is a magazine about motorcycling activities for women. And this seems to be a new major uh, development in motorcycling, uh, maybe a little bit overdue, <laughs> but uh, could you tell us a little bit about how you got involved in this? Sure. Um, well, actually, women riding motorcycles isn't all that new. Women have been riding motorcycles for over 100 years. Yeah. Um, it's really become a new phenomenon in the last 5 to 10 years. And I became involved because I've been riding motorcycles for 11 years. And when I started riding, I wasn't treated very well by motorists. And I was a mother and a homeowner and a business owner. And I just said, wait this isn't right to be treated like this. So I started a magazine for women, career women, family women who enjoy motorcycling from the front seat as well as the back seat. And today, uh, women riding motorcycles is the fastest growing segment in the industry of riders. I believe it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They've realized that uh, you don't have, a woman's place isn't on the back seat anymore. <laughs> yeah, well I see you've recruited some experienced talent to write for your magazine. I saw, uh, I looked at an issue yesterday and uh, Jamie Elvidge was in there. Yes, Jamie Elvidge is our editor. In fact, mm -hmm. she just did a piece with her husband, mm -hmm. Perry King, who also writes for us on ESPN last Sunday. Okay. And uh, she's a very talented writer and I'm real proud to have her aboard mm -hmm. with us. The magazine is doing very well. We're in our third year. It's growing like crazy. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of stuff in there for men as well because we're not trying to alienate the men. We're trying to join them. As we've just yes. added to our masthead, uh, American Woman Magazine, sharing the spirit of adventure. That's a great theme. Thank you, Thank Courtney. You. Thank you, Norm. <laughs> as was mentioned earlier, all the major manufacturers have demo rides. As you can see, there are some rather stringent rules, including over-the-ankle boots or shoes. Here's the sign-up area. Basically, because of the demand, you have to go first thing in the morning and sign up and make an appointment in order to get to ride the motorcycle of your choice. If you don't have your own boots, Honda and some of the other manufacturers have a selection of boots in different sizes you can wear. Good afternoon everyone, my name is Jeff and my partner's around here somewhere, but anyway we're going to be taking on the uh, tour this afternoon. We've got a 20 mile ride set up, it's going to take us roughly 30 to 35 minutes, probably closer to 40 because of the rain out there we're going to slow everything down a little bit, uh, plus in the turns and all that. Um, what else, we're going to do something a little different, we're going to be one big giant group so we're going to have a train of 20, 25 bikes, so it'll be pretty neat out there. Anyway, uh, the sport guys will be following me. I'll be up at the lead of the pack here. What we're going to do is we're going to exit the park, go down here, wait for the police officers to go out and stop traffic for us, and then take a right out of the parking lot. Once you get right out of the parking lot, you want to immediately get over into the left-hand lane because we're going to take a left at the first traffic light. 
right? There's a lot of oil and stuff down there. I saw this morning, so probably the water it might even be a little slick. So just be real careful when you come up to that light. Give everybody lots of room too. Whenever on the road, because of conditions, maybe spread out a little more than we normally would. Just uh, a little extra safety. Some of the manufacturers only keep going when the pavement is dry. Others, though, will ride rain or shine, providing that the people who signed up for the ride want to go. I've seen a lot of demo rides, and I've never seen riders turn down the opportunity. The fellow in blue that just walked off the right side of your screen is one of the lead riders. <laughs> These demo rides are a great opportunity for riders because Dealers are understandably reluctant to uh, let someone go out on one of their bikes unless they know that that person is very seriously interested. This is a typical dinner of an owner's group. This particular one is the Kawasaki Concor owner's group. You can see their bikes lined up for picture. This group enjoys sport touring. This is a little excerpt from uh, a ride that was taken in the country by the Concord Owners Group. Once again, rallies are only one of many activities for road riders. We'll be looking at more road rider activities in future episodes. Well, that's all we have time for this month. Remember, there will be a new show next month. In the meantime, I'd like to invite you to join the over 7 million people who enjoy the world of motorcycling. See you next time.